Hi everybody. <laughs> so actually today I gotta show you my baby. Um, yeah, not 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 baby, but like something that I created in, with my spare time just to have fun. So um, actually I'm a data scientist working in um, Travo Wholesaler. Uh, it's called GTA, which is now uh, hotelfest.com. Sorry, I'm too loud. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but uh, this is my side project, so it's not related to work. Uh, it's something that I kind of get inspired uh, by reading some news, so I'll show you. So, um, yeah, anybody who heard about this before? Yeah, I see some nod. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I read that somebody kind of um, used a machine to write a Harry Potter fiction. I was like, what? That's very interesting because I'm really into deep learning and AI. So I think that mm, maybe I could do that as well. So, but today I, I ain't gonna use uh, Harry Potter because uh, it's copyrighted. I can't download like the whole set of Novo for free. So, uh, but I'll show you something else. Uh, but before I show you my result, I gotta tell you how I do it. Uh, so anybody who have uh, some experience with um, neural network, deep learning, yeah. Technical people, wow, okay, uh, yeah, maybe you guys know more than me, but bear with me. So, um, yeah, so actually I have a very small neural network that got four layers. Um, the first one, of course, is input layer. In the middle, we have uh, word embeddings, uh, which I'll explain later, and also RSTM, long short-term memory, which uh, I'll also explain later. And at the end, we have a softmax output because uh, we want to have an output that is like a distribution. So um, I will explain why we have this softmax output in a while. So for the input uh, first, because uh, we have a bunch of words, right? We call that corpus. Uh, so we have like a actually just like a long article of words. So uh, the first thing we have to do, we have to make it into usable data that the our neural network understand. So uh, I actually encode them with numbers, so each word is represented by a unique number. Uh, I mean, each unique word is a unique number. So uh, after that, you will have like sentence that is actually encoded with word. But uh, we want to decode it at the end when we get the result because we want to have no like we want to have a paragraph to read, right? That we can read. So I need to save the dictionary for the decoding later. So also uh, now I will go to the output. So output, as I said, we want a distribution. Why we want a distribution? Because um, we want to have some creativity for the, uh, for the model. We want to be able to control. Uh, it's not a perfect prediction, actually. We want some uh, slight changes so it could create something that is um, creative, which is, um, which is what we want in writing a novel, right? We want something creative. So. Uh, we want to sample from the distribution. And also, uh, as we train the data, uh, if, you, if you have heard about like uh, training and things like that, we have to have a label that is labeled the correct answer. So basically what we do is like we have sentence that's encoded. So actually we want to predict the next word. So we will um, use the next word as, a, as an output label. But since our output, our predicted output is a distribution, so one number doesn't match. So we have to do a one-hot encoding. Uh, anybody heard about one-hot encoding? Kind of, yes, yes, that's good. Uh, so basically, uh, if I have a word that is encoded, for example, um, uh, the number of that word is two. So for that factor, I'll have uh, zero, zero, one, and then all zeros to the end. So basically, um, we only got uh, we have a very big long vector that's only have one in one position that is representing that word. Other position we will just have zero. So, okay, let's go into a more complex idea. Hopefully you can kind of um, have something to take away as well, even though you are not like, I'm not a technical person, but at least you've got to know something fun about the neural network. So one thing very interesting is word embeddings because, um, as I said, we can represent the word in a one-hot vector 
is the one that is like all zero and only one. But um, that's, that's not very good. Two reasons. Why? Because, uh, for example, we have a vocabulary of 10,000 words. Then we will, what we end up with, we need a 10,000 um, dimensional space to represent all the words, which is very big. And, you know, we need a lot of memory, so it's not good. And also, the word could have different meaning. For example, uh, the word Paris, it could mean the place, Paris, in France. But it could also mean a person, Paris Hilton. So um, how do the computer kind of understand the word with the context of the word? So uh, for one hot encoding, we, we actually, uh, if you are a mathematician or some, somebody who, who have some experience with um, linear algebra and math, we will map this, um, for example, 10,000 dimensional space into a smaller, like a, a lower dimensional space, for example, 128. And then uh, each vector in that space uh, is basically like the picture on the left hand side. They will have, for example, a vector for queen, a vector for king, a vector for man, a vector for women. But uh, in this very magical special space, we can have calculations like these on the right hand side. You will see that uh, king minus man plus women will be queen. So we can have like factor. Um, manipulation and kind of uh, preserve the meaning of the word. So oh, it's magical, but actually it's not magic. It's actually machine learning. So for some people, they are like, oh, how can uh, a machine learn that? Actually, we will use some. Um, also, we will have another kind of similar technique that we have some you know, uh, labels and also some training set to kind of train the computer to understand, to train to, to kind of find this mapping to map the original one host space into this magical space. Um, so yeah, this is word embeddings. So another thing that is very crucial to our um, neural network is the long, long short term memory. What this is doing is uh, actually, uh, let's, let's start from the beginning. A neural network is a lot of units, right? Uh, that's linked together. So what makes uh, this long short-term memory is different is that uh, this is a recurrent neural network. Uh, sounds complex, but uh, the main idea is that uh, the, when we train the data, we will have uh, a set of input and a label, right, at the end. So uh, usually when we train it in a normal, maybe like a MLP, a normal neural network, we have, um, so one set of data is not related to another set of data, we train them and then we put it to a side and then train the other set and then put it to a side. But uh, for the, a recurrent neural network, the result of the previous training is preserved to help train the next set of input and output. So that's why you can see it's like a loop, right? Because after one training, we want it to go back into the, the unit to calculate for the next one. And uh, what makes a uh, long short term memory different from other recurrent neural network is that it got some gates. What these gates do is that um, it will kind of selectively choose what context in the previous training to preserve, what to update, and what to output. So basically, we have um, so called forget gate, forget things, uh, the input gate, and the output gate. Uh, and mathematics, if you're a fan of that, you can read it. <laughs> but I won't go into the details, uh, just not to um, make you guys very sleepy. So. Okay, so this is the fun stuff. Uh, this is some example that I captured earlier. Uh, so you can see that um, the Shakespeare one, actually I, I put in uh, some plays. I don't put in all Shakespeare's work because it's too much. So I put in maybe like um, seven, eight plays, some comedy, some tragedy. But uh, it still looks a bit gibberish for me because I'm not trained as a Shakespearean you know, actor or uh, uh, you know, literature or something. So I don't understand it. <laughs> so instead, I, would, I download some of the Trump speech and try to fit in to see what's going on. Basically, uh, I realized that the sentence have a certain amount of grammatical sense, but the, 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 the context is crazy, is more crazier than Trump, so yeah. Uh, also, also, I'll do a demo. 
So hopefully it works. Yes, it works. Thanks for my friend who set it up, but it's not showing here. Um, I need Joe to help. No, but it's not on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, how are we doing with time? We still have some time, so we still have some time to do a demo. I'll show you the code and yeah. You want to make it bigger? Uh, yeah, make the words bigger so everybody can see. Yeah, yes. Uh, let's open this one. So yeah, uh, if you have like done this before, this is uh, obviously Python on Jupyter Notebook, and also um, what I'm using is uh, Keras, uh, which is uh, on top of TensorFlow. So um, here we do a, a smaller demo because uh, I can't fit in the whole my whole corpus inside. So um, maybe I will do a Romeo and Juliet first. Or, or maybe, or, or maybe we don't have time for two. So, who want to see Romeo and Juliet uh, prediction? Okay. Uh, who want to see like Trump's speech? Oh wow, that's a lot of enthusiasm for for that. So I gotta go for that. Oh, I think we are out of memory. Let me fix that. Give me one sec. Because the the whole speech is too big. So. Um, now I have, uh, what I did is I wanted to, when it sampled the sentence, it kind of skipped some of them, so it fit into the memory, yeah. So you can see it's doing something now. Um, yeah, as I said, it's a model with three layers. Uh, the input layer, we don't count it, so it's three layer. And um, yeah, we have a lot of parameters to train, so that's why we need a lot of memory. So when I don't change the parameters, it can become too big and I can't train it on a, a really small um, uh, cloud notes. Uh, it's like watching paint dry, so how about we take some questions at the moment and we'll see the result at the end. Any questions? Did you have to do any other NLP or all the other things? Did you have to use anything else from uh, any or something? Yeah, actually for the wet embeddings, there's actually uh, two approach. For some more complex job, what, uh, what can be done is like, you have to train the wet embeddings like separately. So to make it more precise, for example, um, if, what if, what if like, you are not using English, you are doing something with another language like French, then you have to specifically train the embeddings uh, layers with French. But uh, for me, now I'm using Keras and I'm not like, this is not something for work, it's for fun. So um, I don't have to specifically train it. It's just, uh, I use the default in uh, Keras. Oh, question there. Um, are you using anything for dimensionality reduction? To reduce the dimensions? Uh, for the wet embeddings, right? Uh, basically, um, the idea is similar to uh, PCA, but um, but what's different from PCA is that in, for PCA you have to kind of analyze, uh, have like a mapping to see which one is the most important one, and you choose those to represent your vectors, right? But uh, for word embeddings, actually it's done automatically by the uh, machine learning. So uh, actually the mapping is a matrix and is is trained uh, with the machine learning. Yeah. Thanks. We're halfway there, so maybe two more questions. <laughs> Thanks. Can you get it to uh, come up with a positive or a negative, kind of the text that you're getting out? Can you control what kind of tone you want in any way? Uh, that's more like a sentimental um, thing that uh, basically now for NLP, one of the very uh, uh, hot topics is that we do sentiment, uh, sentiment analysis on the, on the uh, paragraph or article. But for this case, uh, I don't control what uh, is given out. It's basically the cre creativity is done by the machine and I have no control about it. And I'm sure that for the corpus, if you fit in something, uh, remember like for a neural network, it's basically what you fit in is what you come out. So you can see uh, when the previous slide, when I show it, you fit it with Shakespeare, it kind of, or the gibberish look very Shakespeare-like and for Trom, it's very, you know, aggressive. <laughs> so um, so uh, if you want to have some control over what it gave you, you have to train it maybe with more positive uh, 
things, maybe like story from children books, more positive and you know, like bubbly, and so what comes out will be more happy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, one more question? Yeah. Hi, um, when you do the embedding of the words, do you have to do anything because I'm assuming that Shakespeare and Trump aren't exactly, there are quite a lot of words that aren't English and wouldn't be in a, in a normal corpus. Um, how does the embedding deal with that? Yes, uh, I believe for carers, it will automatic do, automatically do the uh, word embedding training here. So that's why when I fit in Shakespeare, it, the, the outcome is more Shakespeare-like. But it's also some, something to deal with uh, because the, li the vocabulary is all Old English, right? So that's why the outcome is more, will be all Old English. It won't be something that's like uh, more than words that's com come out. So it depends on what, you, um, what the corpus is. Uh, oh, it's done, but I will finish your question. Uh, yeah, it depends on what you fit in because the vocabulary depends on the, the corpus itself. Uh, for carers, I, I have to double check, do, do, do it like uh, for default, does it uh, train it again or does it use the, you know, the, um, the built-in weight? Actually, I, I'm, I think that you have a, a kind of a parameter you can change. Do you want to retrain the, uh, the uh, word embeddings kind of uh, learning weight? But uh, for this case, I didn't uh, play around with it. Um, so I do have to check the default setting, but I do believe that it's not a big problem in this case because for Shakespeare it's old English, so maybe the grammar or these um, things still preserved. It's just the vocabulary is old English instead of the modern one. Yeah, so let's have a look at the result and what you guys generate. <laughs> do you like it? Anything that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think that makes much sense. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, just scroll down, yeah. Uh, what is a whip, gentlemen? My, my English is not my first language, so maybe it's too hard for me to understand. <laughs> yeah, so it's fun, but I mean, uh, as a conclusion, you can see we are still far from having uh, a machine to generate something that really makes sense to us. We can still see that this is so different from what a human would do. Uh, so actually I found out that uh, the po Harry Potter that I talked in the beginning, that fan fiction, actually uh, they generate something but they have to find somebody to rewrite it. So um, yeah, we are still a bit far from having the computer doing every, everything. But uh, I think we are getting there. So um, be careful, they may be, you know, following you soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>